Hi there. This is Fish, the only singing, talking, and dancing fish in the world. And you are out there watching Toasted. <laughs> still fishing, still swimming around. Uh, it's, uh, it's an honor for me again. It's 10 years ago that I spoke uh, to each other on Toasted. Welcome back. How are you doing? Doing good. Very hot today. It's not the weather for a Scotsman. Oh, <laughs> we had. We had uh, we had 40 degrees last week in Munich, which was crazy, but it's going to be 28 degrees when we hit the stage today. So It's going to be really hot. Yeah, yeah. Are you in the sun? I don't think you're in the sun. No, no. No, that's a good so, thing. This will yeah. be okay. So we're, we're here to talk about uh, uh, Farewell to Childhood Tour. Uh, you're going to play that tonight. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. How has been the response so far, the last five shows you've done? It's been great. I mean, um, I was nervous the first show we did at Sweden, you know, because I mean, the keys have dropped. I mean, the album's 30 years old, you know, and I think back then I was singing in a very false voice, you know. Yeah. I, I was never a trained singer, so, you know, I just sung how I felt. And, you know, at that time I was a lot younger, so I was singing a lot higher. And it's, um, so we had to drop the keys. So I was a bit nervous about, you know, how it was going to sound, but it's been, it's been great, Good. you know. Good. And I think, you know, because it, it's a bit deeper, it suits me now, you know, it's, and you've got the rate there. You know, back then I was singing very, very high, yeah. so there wasn't much room to move. Yeah. Whereas now that I've dropped it down a bit, you know, there's, you can play about with the dynamic a bit more, which is good, you know. You had, a, you had some trouble with your voice the you know, last couple of years? Yeah, I mean, uh, 2008 to 2009, I had two operations. Um, I had a cyst on my voice, which was a swelling inside one of the cords. And uh, thankfully, when it was for a while, it was a possibility it was cancer, yeah. and it was, uh, which was a worry. But yeah. you know, thankfully, everything came through, and then I went out on the Fish Heads Club tour and refound my voice again. And you know, it's, it's good. good stuff. You know, Very like good. I said, I mean, it, it just came from years of punishment. You know, singing in the wrong way. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, I'm happy where I am now. But I mean, you know, as I said, I'm I intend to retire in 2018 after. We write the, the, the final album, Veltschmerz, next year, and then we go out, we start to at the end of 16, and we'll finish in, 1980, in 2018, you know? And um, it feels good. I, I now know I've got an end game, I know what I'm doing, I've got a plan, you know? Yeah. I want to get into writing books, sort of biographies, screenplays, I want to get... Well, you're going too quick, you're yeah. going too quick. I'm yeah. going back on that. <laughs> But it's nice to hear from you that you have a plan and you know that you're going to finish it, basically. Uh, yeah, this yeah. is fun. I mean, doing, doing the Farewell to Childhood, it's like, you know, it was an important album for me yeah. in yeah. A5. It was an album that did a lot for Marillion and myself, yeah. you know. Yeah. It, I swear I found out really how to write. I swear I really discovered my style. So, you know, you finished extensively with Fugazi and then you were not inspired, or were you? How did that go from that time, you know, ending Fugazi tour up to writing Misplaced Childhood? As always, you know, we were kept on the road by the management, you know, we were wanting to make more and more money off us. So we were out on the road and then it was suddenly like next album and we, we weren't very sure what to do. And then at that time EMI had spent a lot of money on us on the recording and our contract wasn't very good, which meant that the money we were making off the records wasn't enough to pay back all the money EMI were giving us to support tours and videos and blah, blah, blah. So we knew that we really had one more chance at this and we decided to, to do what we wanted to do which was to write a concept a concept album and we went out and it was the right thing to do at the right time and um you know we wrote the first side pretty quickly yeah. and uh, it was very cohesive but the second side took a bit longer to, to put together but it was you know it was a very natural album you know i think you know we we, we wrote to our strengths, you know. And there was a lot of jamming went on, a lot of playing about, and then joining bits to bits, which became kind of the Marillion way of working, right? And it was, and then Clutching at Straws came up, which was where we needed to grow, you know. And we started to grow, but it's a very grown up album. Where I wanted to go with the music wasn't where they wanted to go, you know. 29 around that time, weren't you? Yeah, some yeah. of that, you know. Yeah. But I mean, you know, a lot of bands would never get that chance nowadays. I mean, you know, to do two, having two albums to get to the third. I mean, normally you'd be forced to compromise. I mean, a band nowadays. You were very young uh, then, but you record in Berlin. Why? Because it was cheap. Was it? That was, was the that was the reason why. Was it was still, I mean, the wall was still up there. Yeah, yeah. No, was, it was Hans's Hans studios were... Was it inspirational also, writing of there? Course, of course it was. Of course why? it was. Why was that? Because you were an island, you were an island, and it was very difficult for people to get to you, right? So we didn't have much contact with the record company. Nobody knew what we were doing, and we were left with Chris Kimsey, you know, putting this album together. And it was, uh, and it had a strong sense of rebellion within it because we were doing something that was other people weren't doing, you know. 
So then the demos are finished and going to the record company, what did they say? We didn't, we had some demos, but like, it wasn't, the album wasn't really demoed. So me and mine never understood us. They never understood what Marillion were about. We sold shitloads of records and they liked that, but they didn't know why. You're doing a lot of things these days, you know, you're doing this record now, uh, you're writing, uh, you're going to stop, but in the end, um, so what, what can we expect from the, from the coming time? So you know, doing tonight, you're going to do Mr. Childhood in fully? Yeah, Again, we, play, we play the full album and then we come back. We're in Holland in November, uh, November, December, and um, that's, we, we've only got, I think, four shows. Tilburg 013 sold out. The Melk Vague is just about sold out. Uh, Bird or I is sold out for the second night, and the first night has just gone on sale. And then that's it. And then I, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to be seen to be milking a Marillion album. I don't want to be seen to be a tribute band of myself. I wanted to do, I wanted to take the album out. I want to have fun. I want to say goodbye to it. When I go into the farewell tour, it's too big an album to put in a set list, you know? So it's like, let's do it now, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then at the moment, I'm working on the, the remasters because a lot of my, my catalogue has um, been unavailable for a while. So we're putting together the, the definitive remasters and the ones that come out in November, just before the tour, is Sunsets and Empire, okay. uh, Rain Gods with Zippos, <laughs> Fellini Days, and Field of Crows, which has been completely remixed by Chris Kimsey. And it's like, so what's the difference from that mix then prior to the other one? Very different. Yeah, it's more raw. Yeah, it's it's difficult to explain. It's, down. it's a very 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 great mix. And I mean, I've been writing nine between nine and ten thousand words for every album remaster because it's like 90 pages uh, it's a hardback book yeah. with three CDs in it there's live versions the demos that we did and a remastered uh, original album right. so but I've been writing nine to ten thousand words every album I've still and I've, I've managed and it's, it's revisiting and going through all that it's been interesting those written stories are you going to reuse that for your book eventually which coming out later when you stop they'll be used as reference markers you know i mean i think you know within the remasters it's more at the music you know it's more about the music whereas the, the autobiography takes in more of what my life was it goes into the stories behind it a lot more you know about what was happening you know but i mean um and as i said before i mean i'm not looking at doing a linear autobiography it's more like it's like david niven did where Moons of Bloom and bring on the empty horses. You know, he jumps about in his career to different stories and anecdotes and things. And I think that makes it more interesting. Than, I mean, I've read some terrible uh, musicians' autobiographies that are like, you know, so <laughs> boring. Paul's got a new documentary. Great. I haven't seen it, but you know, I want to see it. It's awesome. Stuff about it. it's not to find on the internet. It's not being pirated yet. No. Tell me about it. It was How did a, that come about? It was a doc. Somebody, when we played Poland in the Fishheads Club tour, um, I had this kind of uh, renegade video company. And um, they said, we want to do an off the wall documentary. And we went, okay, let's do something. And I was to be involved. I was going to be a cameraman on it and things like that. So I was filming myself. And, and then we, we didn't really have any idea what to do. So it was filmed in kind of 210, finished in 211. And then um, it kind of sat there and it was. Mo- sort of worked on it, it was, then things happened, there's a long story about yeah. that. I mean, we had something like about 80 hours of footage. It was something r- ridiculous. And there was no skeleton, so I had to come together and work out how we were going to put, how we were going to oh, string yeah. it together. We put it together and we thought, okay, Edinburgh Film Festival, right. let's put it in and see if we get it. And it got taken on. Yeah. So it was accepted in the Edinburgh Film Festival and a lot of people really liked it. We've got the hour and a half documentary, yeah. but that's going to be in the, the Warsaw Film Festival and maybe some other film festivals. It was fun to do. It was a lot of fun. I saw some, uh, some clips here and there. You're playing in the mine. Yeah. Or somewhere, what was the most ridiculous thing you've done? The main thing was pretty crazy. And, uh, Where was that? It was in a place called Zabzi in, in Poland. And it was, it was a it's a historical place and people could go and visit. Okay. And they put gigs on in the, in the old um, good. The pump houses. It's, it was fun. Yeah. Mogadishu was pretty weird. We played Mogadishu as a three piece. Yeah. We flew into Kenya and flew into Somalia. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That was. For playing shows in, in, in one show, one show. We flew in, flew out. It was the most dangerous place I've ever been in my life, right? Even apart from Bosnia, you know. So it made, it made Bosnia look like Butlins, you yeah. know, made a lot of Disneyland. I mean, Mogadishu was a very heavy, heavy, heavy place. You know? uh, Fees of consequences. What, what, what? You know, that's um, how, how was that? You know, how was that recording process? It took quite a while to write. 
and it was well, well, personnel well. change. Steve Ansis, my bass player, came back in who'd written 30 Star with me. And we'd kind of split for a while, we got back together and um, yeah, and it kind of came together with him and Foss Patterson and Robin Bolt came in and it moved quite fast. We, re- we recorded it, I can't even remember we recorded it. So it was a, uh, it was 2.12. I think it, it kind of came out. I mean, I don't have a record company, there's no pressure on me. I don't want to have to put an album out at a specific time. It's like, let's write, let's take as long as we want to write, make sure it's good. Yeah. You know? Production and, is great. Yeah, it's Callum really Malcolm, good. who's going to do the Velchmerz album. And Steve Vances and Robin Bolt will be working on uh, um, Velchmerz along with John Beck, my keyboard player. But I mean, you know, Feast of Conscious came out and it got great reviews. I mean, everybody was saying it was like the best album that I've done since Vigil. It equaled the Vigil album, which yeah. was fantastic. I could tell you and I think that's inspired me to do really one more. Right. I know I've got one more great album in me, okay. and that's it. And that's when I stop. Yeah. You know, I don't want to. I don't know. I don't want to just make bits of plastic just to make money. Yeah. That's not what it's about for me. I retired from the music business in 2018 when I'm 16, 18, okay. and then I, then I become a writer and a full-time gardener. Yeah. I've seen some my peers going on stages at festivals and stuff and sometimes I just go like, I, I don't want to be doing that. I don't want to have to be doing that, you know. I mean, if I want to go out and, you know, play music live, I'll do it like Fishheads Club Acoustic. Yeah. And just have fun, maybe do 10 dates or whatever, you know, 20 shows and that's it, you know.